Hello Winnie Game fan, here's another awesome week of releases to round off April, beginning with Shadows of Doubt, a very interesting looking title with a voxel art style, being a stealth focused immersive sim where you play as a detective hunting down a serial killer. The sci-fi noir setting looks neat, as is the core premise, where this has a lot of momentum for good reason. A wonderful looking experience this week is Mail Time, where you play as a little mushroom person, delivering the mail to woodland creatures. It looks like a low stress 3D platformer, where gliding about on a letter looks wonderful with an adorable art style to match and looks like a good type. Hey, if you made it this far, subscribe to my weekly newsletter to keep on top of all things indie games, link in the description below. I told you that 3D roguelites are going to become more of a thing, with Up Runner being the latest title of interest, one which is set in a cyberpunk world where you have to battle and reset a rogue AI. It gives me a little bit of a destiny feel with the character designs, with three different character classes in the soldier, ninja or hacker in this case. As with most cyberpunk games, cybernetic augmentations will be a crucial part of progression We are collecting nanites as the meta currency to upgrade from run to run, being quite the curiosity for the week. Street Lights is a gorgeous third-person action-adventure title set in a very purple world, which of course signifies corruption, where you play as a being of light, literally fighting your inner demons on the path to awakening. Where it really is a gorgeous title that kind of reminds me of Ori in terms of style. The primal designs of the bosses look awesome, where this title did drop out of nowhere, being announced just a couple of weeks ago, so here's wishing them all the best with launch. Roots of Pacha has been one of my most anticipated Farm Simulation RPG titles, but I'm happy to report that it will be out this week. This is a prehistoric farming sim which may or may not be historically accurate, but you get the gist, where you have to slowly move from hunter-gatherer to a self-sustaining community, domesticating plants and animals into something more resembling their more modern versions. There's fishing, mining, a research tree and tech system, with the expected festivals, weddings and rituals. However, I would go in with tempered expectations since they did release quite an early alpha build which was met with a mixed reception, so definitely wait for some coverage before diving head in. Bigger games begin with the 1.0 release of Stranded Alien Dawn, a sci-fi survival colony sim which is good, where along with the release will come the military outpost update to round off the game.
Cyan, you know about the gods of order and chaos, don't you? Yeah, who doesn't? Your eye bears a crest called the chaos emblem. It means you've been chosen to fight for the gods. We also have the Steam and English language releases of Trinity Trigger, an action JRPG from a Japanese developer, having reviewed pretty well with 7s and 8s and might be of interest, even more so with local co-op support. You know it's not a war oracle for nothing. What can I say? Traveling's part of my job. We must remain ever vigilant. Relax! We can handle whatever comes our way. Let's be prepared for anything. If you ever start feeling overprepared, then you haven't actually prepared enough. You're no ordinary vermin. Could those strange weapons be? Pay less mind to whatever they are, and more to who commands this army. I will await the king's orders. For now, let us see how things unfold. I shall bring an end to the divine war. All right, fine. You want to fight? Then bring it. Smaller games begin with Amanda the Adventurer, one that is certainly aping Dora the Explorer but is a horror game, so check it out if you love the genre. Similar to Trinity Trigger, Crystal Rise is a Japanese action-adventure RPG that is a little bit more minimalist but looks okay and will have English language support at launch so I hope the translation is good. An update that has to be mentioned is Cult of the Lamb, Relics of the Old Faith, a free update to the insanely popular action roguelite management sim from last year, where it's a massive content drop with new post-game story, a deeper combat system, revamped bosses, new quests, progression systems, secrets and more, being insane value, all for the low low price of free, and shows you why indie developers are awesome. Similarly, another update of interest is Gas Station Simulator Airstrip DLC, a paid content update for another insanely popular first-person simulator title where in the original, you were just running a regular old gas station but can now handle planes as well.
Magical Drop 6 is the latest entry in an arcade puzzler series that dates back to 1995, originally from Japanese developer Data East, but the IP has somehow found its way to a French developer and Polish publisher. Minabo A Walk Through Life is a strange little title, a social simulation life sim title where you play as turnips, being weird and interesting as a result. Together in Battle is a tactical RPG that looks fairly strategic, with a bunch of different characters and environmental interactions coming to us from developer Sinister Design who specialises in this genre. We also have the Adventure Strategy Management Sim title, Welcome to Goodland, where you play as an ordinary salary man who falls into having to launder money for a Mexican cartel, having a similar vibe to Breaking Bad, where the game will force you to make choices that will examine your morals. Let's kick off the top 5 with Ash of Gods The Way, a spin-off of a tactical RPG from 2018 which I would recommend, but no prior knowledge is required to enjoy this game. Similar to the original, the action takes place on a tactical grid but is much more contained where the game frames it as various tournaments that our protagonist has to get through, with a deck builder twist that was not in the original. For those of you asking, no, this is not from the developer of the Banner Saga, although I can certainly see the similarities, but the strategy action is where it's at. Another highly anticipated roguelike makes it to launch with Dungeon Drafters, a classic grid-based turn-based title set again in more contained rooms and environments where you play as a wizard delving into various dungeons.
I love the pixel art here, where, love it or hate it, it is another deck building title, where the combination and synergies between spells should be the most satisfying part as you fling all sorts of magic at your enemies. Now I'm pretty excited for this title since Cassette Beasts was near the top of my list of upcoming games like Pokemon, but wait, there's a twist. Since this is more like Digimon instead, let me explain. Rather than capturing creatures, your two heroes can instead transform into them, even being able to merge into a more powerful form. However, it otherwise has a classic turn-based combat system, but mixes that in with open-world exploration where I love this genre, so of course I'm in. Many anguish fills this residence, Benedict. It's Metroidvania Mania once again with the last case of Benedict Fox, a creepy action title with eldritch horror elements while Hiro is investigating an old manor with a demon companion by his side. The demon allows you to enter the memories of the recently deceased, where the surreal environments and terrifying bosses, combined with a Tim Burton inspired art style, certainly makes this of interest. We go from strength to strength with one of the most beautiful Metroidvania entries which was top of my list for good reason since this game has high potential from the beautiful soundtrack to art and combat but comes to us from a Chinese developer so I hope the localization is good since if so, After Image could be great where a special mention goes to patron member and indie game ultra fan Sean H where you can find more upcoming Metroidvanias in this video.